In this video, I'll be constructing Z and T confidence intervals for a population mean in R. Suppose we have a sample mean X bar of 15, a standard deviation of 4, and a sample size of 35. Note that I separated the statements using semicolons here. This will make R execute each assignment as if they are on different lines. The standard error of the mean is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. I'm going to wrap it in parentheses so when I hit run, R will also print the value of the assignment. I'm going to select all statements and click run or control enter. You can see the value of the standard error of the mean in the console here. First, we assume that we know the population standard deviation or population variance, in which case we use Z. Some authors or courses also use Z whenever the sample size is large. Now, suppose we want a 95% confidence interval for the mean. The middle area under the curve will be 0.95. The remaining 0.05 is divided equally into the two tails, leaving us 0.025 in each tail. The critical Z values are the Z values that separate the confidence region from the critical region in the tails. Because the distribution is symmetric, we will have the same number, negative on the left and positive on the right. The positive value of this number, let's call it Z95, can be found using QNUM function. The area below the positive value is 0.975 or 1 minus 0.025. I'm going to wrap it in parentheses and click run to generate the Z value of 1.96. The lower limit of the confidence interval, let's call it LL, will be X bar minus the Z value times the standard error of the mean. I'm going to copy the formula, call it UL for the upper limit, and change the minus to plus. I will use the cat function to display both of them on the same line. I'm going to select the last three lines and run. You can see the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval displayed here. We say we are 95% confident that the true mean lies between those two numbers. Now suppose the population variance or the population standard deviation is unknown. Then we use the T distribution. Note that some people only use T when the sample size is small, that is less than 30. So let's suppose our sample size n is now 20. Suppose the sample standard deviation is also 4. Then the standard error of the mean will change since it has n in its denominator. So it has to be recalculated. So I will copy it, separate with a semicolon, and paste it on the same line as n here to save vertical space. Now suppose we want a 99% confidence interval. Let's call the critical value t99. We will use the QT function to obtain the T critical value. Just like Z, it requires the lower tail area. But unlike Z, it needs the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1 for one sample mean. To obtain the positive T critical value, we can calculate the lower tail area by taking 1 minus 0 0.01 over 2. We can also use 1 plus 0.99 over 2, which I'm going to use here. Comma then the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. The lower limit is thus x bar minus t99 times the standard error of the mean, and the upper limit is with a plus. Again, I'm going to concatenate both lower and upper limits on the same line. I'm going to highlight all statements and click Run. You can see the lower and upper limits of the 99% confidence interval using t here. Finally, constructing T confidence intervals given raw data is even easier. Let's use one of the built-in data in R called cars. We can view its title and the first few rows by typing head cars. Suppose we want a 95% confidence interval for the speed column. We can simply type t.test cars dollar sign then speed. Running that gives us a 95% confidence interval for the mean as part of the output. If we want a different level of confidence, say 99%, we can simply add another argument, conf.level equals 0.99. And running that gives a 99% confidence interval here. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.